In this video, we're going to be looking at the face-centered cubic unit cell, or FCC. We'll be looking at the coordination number, the number of atoms per unit cell, and the relationship between edge length A and the radius R of any atom or ion in the unit cell. If you're not familiar with those terms, then I suggest you go back to my video on the simple cubic unit cell. That's where I define all of these different things. Before we start considering the coordination number for the face-centered cell, we need to kind of take a look at this cube and sort of visualize what is, uh, what is being represented here. So just like in the body-centered and the simple cubic cells, we have eighths of atoms located at each one of the corners of this cell. So at each corner of, of the, the unit cell, there is one eighth of an atom in that particular position. In addition, the face-centered unit cell, as you can see, has a portion of an atom that is located along the face of every side of the cube. And this represents, this part right here, represents one half of an atom. So here again is another one half of an atom. So we're trying to understand the coordination number, how many atoms are in direct contact with any given atom in the unit cell. Let's try to focus on this half of an atom right here, just looking at this guy. We can see that this particular atom or any atom on the face is gonna be in contact with the four atoms that are in the corners of that same face. So we've so far counted um, up to four atoms that are touching this guy right here. In addition, this atom right here is in contact, direct contact, with all of the other atoms that are located um, on the adjacent faces as well. So we've got one, two, three, four atoms that it's in contact with. Plus it's also in contact with this atom on the face, so that's number five, and this atom on the face as well, that's gonna be number six. Plus it's got an atom behind number five. So there's one on the back side, that's gonna be seven. And it has an atom down on the bottom as well that will be number eight. So, so far we've counted eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is behind five, and eight, which is underneath the six. We have atoms that are in similar position right here in the adjacent unit cell over here. So we're gonna have another atom uh, here and here. This would be similar to five and seven. So now we're up to atoms nine and 10. And also this adjacent unit cell has an atom up top, that would be number 11, and an atom down below, that would be number 12. That's pretty tricky to visualize the coordination number for any given atom in the face-centered unit cell is 12. And it might be just easier if you search on the internet for some sort of animation, a movie, not a drawing like what I've done here, but an actual movie video that kind of zooms around and allows you to visualize that coordination number of 12. What about in terms of the number of atoms per unit cell? Well, I've already said that we have, again, we have eighths of an atom at every corner, every one of the eight corners of this unit cell. So altogether, the corners of the unit cell are gonna add up to the equivalent of one atom. In addition to that, we have a half of an atom on every one of the faces of the cube. A cube has six faces or six sides. So those six sides, each times one half of an atom, the six sides together will give us a total of three atoms. And then we're gonna add that to the one total atom that comes from the eighths at each one of the quarters. And again, this is another thing that's pretty tricky to visualize. Might be easier for you to see if you were to find an animation four atoms per unit cell. Again, in um, pr uh, I'm putting that in quotation marks because there isn't one whole atom at all inside a unit cell, but rather we have just all these portions of atoms, halves and eighths together. Now, last but not least, let's look at the relationship between the edge length A, which I'm gonna draw out here, and the radius R, which I'm actually gonna define it right there. No, I won't put it there. The radius R, which is right here. Now the same type of problem we have um, as we did with the body-centered cell in that 
no, um, there's no atoms actually span all the way across an edge length. So there's a gap along all of the edge lengths, which, which means we have to use some geometry to come up with the relationship between the edge length A and the radius R. Just like in the body centered cell, we're just gonna define another um, distance on this unit cell, and that's gonna be the distance across the face of any one side of the cube, and we'll call that B, exactly the same as what we used in, in the um, body centered cell. We'll use Py Pythagorean's theorem again because we have a right angle right here. So we know that um, we have side length A and side length A, and then we also have this distance B. Just like in the last video, this distance is actually the equivalent of four radii. So we have one radius here, we have a second radius here, number three radius is right here, and the fourth radius is right there. So in the upper corner here, let's just kind of derive this relationship. We know, starting with Pythagorean theorem, we know that a squared plus a squared is going to equal b squared. So let's write that out, a squared plus a squared equals b squared. And let's let's simplify that. So instead of saying a squared plus a squared, let's say 2a squared. And also, instead of saying b squared, because we want to put this in terms of the radius, let's say uh, 4 radius, which is that distance, 4r squared, 4r squared. And it's important that you remember that b equals 4r. So this is 4r that's being squared. It is not 4 r squared. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of those parentheses. So let's say 2a squared is equal to 16 r squared. And let's divide both sides by 2. a squared equals 8 r squared. And then let's just take the square root of both sides. a equals the square root of 8 times r. And that gives us the relationship between the edge length a and the radius r of any one of the atoms or ions in the face-centered cell.